So hi everyone, uh, welcome to our uh, presentation about our recent paper, Graph Sanitation with the Application to Node Classification. I'm presenter Jay, and this is a joint work with my uh, colleagues from University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, and uh, the joint authors are Dr. Du and my advisor, Dr. Tom. So I'm gonna start with the uh, paper motivation part and then we'll introduce the uh, problem definition with our proposed algorithms. Then I will show the experiment results and conclude this paper. So graph data is ubiquitous and we often see them in our uh, real world application such like the traffic network, uh, social network and the citation networks. And there are versatile graph mining tasks over the graph data such as the uh, ranking tasks by the uh, personalized page rank, the clustering task with spectrum clustering, and the node classification task with the uh, graph neural net based classifiers, and many more. While uh, for the conventional graph mining tasks, uh, they will always treat the given graph as a fixed input. While in this work, we consider that if we can modify the given graphs to improve the performance of our various downstream tasks. And we, for example, uh, in the uh, left-hand figure, uh, it, this is the uh, node classification task. And if we wanted to improve the node classification performance, we might want to uh, add a link between uh, two bl black box and delete a link uh, between uh, black box and uh, white box to improve the node classification performance. So uh, we claim that our desire desirable graph modification method should be highly flexible and should be uh, dependent on uh, any specific downstream task. And it should also support the discrete uh, or continuous modification towards different modality of the graph, such as the uh, node topology and the uh, node features. So we define our problem and name it as the graph sanitation problem. And our problem is uh, specifically designed as a bi-level optimization problem. And we will give a graph, a G, and it is an attribute network. And we will uh, give a mining task and we will put it as a lower level problem. And we uh, name the uh, mining resource uh, as the uh, solution of the mining task, which is denoted as the uh, theta star. And we will also provide another validation uh, over the mining resource to evaluate the money resource. And according to that feedback, we will modify the graph as a tilde G. And at the same time, we claim that uh, the modification should uh, maintain the modified graph to be bounded by the sanitation budget. And here is an example. So assume that we are given a um, citation graph and we wanted to run personalize the page rank over it. And the center uh, paper is the query. So we will have some node pairwise ranking performance constraint. For example, we might prefer the right-hand side paper to have a higher ranking score than the uh, left-hand side paper. And our uh, sanitation budget is limited to, limited to only one edge. So a uh, uh, possible uh, modification is that we can delete the edge from the uh, low ranking paper uh, with, uh, with the query paper. And we provide more examples in our paper. So uh, in this um, paper, we uh, pay more attention uh, on the uh, node classification problem. And it is an, one of the instantiation of our proposed graph sanitation problem. And the lower level problem is instantiated uh, as the performance of the classifier over the training set. And our uh, validation is the performance of the trained classifier uh, over the validation set. So how to solve this problem? Uh, we propose our algorithm named the gas loop. Given this bi-level optimization problem, we observe that uh, we first need to select a node classifier theta. And here we name this classifier as the backbone classifier, because in general, our method will serve as a pre-processing proof. So uh, the final test uh, node classifier will be independent with the uh, backbone classifier select to modify the graph. And in the inner loop, we will uh, optimize the uh, selected backbone classifier and get a convergent classifier. And in the outer loop, we will evaluate such uh, uh, 
optimized backbone classifier's performance and according to its feedback, we will update the graph as the delta g. And in the test phase, we will implement any downstream classifiers over the update uh, graph delta g. So uh, in general, if we wanted to uh, finish such an updating, we need to compute the gradient of the upper level problem with respect to the uh, graph given graph data G. And we adopted the uh, standard iterative differential method where we view the uh, updating of the lower level problem as a dynamic system, which will converge in T iterations. So um, in general, uh, in the updating of the lower level problem, the theta will uh, converge in T iterations. And after we obtain the convergence theta, we will feed it into the uh, upper level problem. And at this time, uh, we will uh, compute the gradient about uh, the upper level problem with respect to G. And attention that here, the given graph is involved into both the upper level problem and the lower level problem. So the computation of the hypergradient will contain several uh, high order differential, um, differential operations, which is brought by the chain rule. And that it will be really time consuming. So we adopt the uh, famous first order approximation over it. And the uh, first order approximation method uh, the, in the first order approximation method, the updating of the lower level problem is the same as we introduced before. While for computing the hypergradient, we only consider the in, uh, direct gradient uh, from the upper level problem with respect to the graph itself. And we sum them together as the, uh, of, as the uh, aggregated uh, hypergradient. And in our practical applications, uh, we will split the label nodes into K training validation split to eliminate those bias uh, brought by a specific training validation split. And this uh, follow the same split as the K fold cross validation. And for every split, we will com um, compute the hyper gradient uh, from the uh, method I introduced from the last slides. And then we will sum the hyper gradient from every split into our final aggregated find um, hyper gradient. So here's an example. Assume that we uh, split the data into two training validation split and uh, we will compute the hyper gradient from them separately and aggregate them together and get our final um, hyper gradient. So given the computed hypergradient, how can we uh, modify the given graph? Uh, actually, our method support the modification towards both the graph topology and the uh, node feature. And here we use the updating of the graph topology as an example. And we can uh, directly use the gradient descent uh, with respect to the uh, adjacency matrix, while here the learning rate should be bounded by the uh, sanitation budget. Or we can adopt the discrete update which means that we can flip uh, several entries from the given adjacency matrix. While such a flipping is guided by a score matrix, which are composed by two parts. One is the preference matrix and another is the availability matrix. And this score matrix is first introduced by some adversarial attack works. So here's explanation about why this score matrix works. To so assume that there are um, node I and G and they are connected and which means that the corresponding entry of the adjacency matrix is equal to one. And the uh, availability matrix, uh, corresponding entries from availability, availability matrix would be minus a uh, negative one. And after that, if our method show that um, the preference matrix uh, get positive entries, it means that um, the algorithm will prefer to add a link between I and J, but that, will should, that should not be encouraged because node I and J are already uh, connected. So it will get uh, negative scores. While uh, if the preference matrix get um, negative negative values from the corresponding entries. And then the final score matrix will get a positive entries. So that should be encouraged. And that's uh, intuitive with our, that's uh, consistent with our intuition that if node IG are already connected, then we should encourage such operations to drop an edge between node I and uh, node G. And the scenarios will get reversed if node I and node G are not connected. And when computing the hypergradient with respect to the adjacency matrix, the uh, gradient matrix tend to be dense. So um, 
the computation were brought um, quadratic complexity with respect to the number of nodes. And that's not acceptable for a lot of large scale networks. So uh, we reveal our goal is that we, our goal is to learn an incremental matrix to do the modification. And we claim a key idea that the modification should not be global and it should only be implemented over a small set of nodes. So for this key idea, we decompose the incremental matrix as the multiplication between two low rank matrix. And we just uh, change the optimization variable from the adjacent matrix uh, to the uh, low rank matrices, the U and the V. And we use the same formula uh, to get the hyper gradient with respect to the uh, low rank matrices. And it follows the exact same paradigm as our full version gasoline, while we update those low rank matrices in a continuous group. And uh, uh, after we adopt those uh, low rank speed up, the uh, computation complexity uh, are linear with respect to the number of nodes and the number of edges. Uh, here's our experiment resource. So uh, again, our gasoline is actually a pre-processing process of the given graph. So it can both modify the uh, graph topology and the uh, graph uh, node features. And at the same time, it support the discrete up, uh, modification and the continuous modification. So we, we combine them together and propose four variants uh, of our gasoline. At the, at the same time, we claim together that we claim again that the backbone classifier is totally independent of the downstream classifiers. So for every variant, we select three baseline, uh, three uh, backbone classifiers, and in total there are twelve settings. And for every setting, we uh, select three downstream classifiers to evaluate their performance. And we find that in most scenarios, the uh, downstream classifiers performance get boosted significantly. And we also uh, verify our results against the poisoning attacks. And we find that our proposed ga uh, gasoline get a very good performance uh, over the CORA and CIC uh, uh, data set, which are very famous uh, benchmarks. And uh, while our method field over the pole block data set. So uh, we claim that we can uh, use our method to incorporate with those established uh, defense methods such as GAT, SVD, and the robust GCN. And we find that their methods uh, performance get further boosted significantly. And we will present more experiment results in our paper. Uh, about the efficacy of our low rank version gasoline, we find that it got comparable performance with our full version gasoline, while at the same time, it got very strong performance over the pole block data set, uh, which is consistent with our uh, observation from our last table, where SVD got very strong performance. And about the efficiency, uh, we, uh, we observe that it is much more efficient compared with our full version gasoline. And this is consistent with our theoretical analysis. Uh, let's conclude our paper. So in this paper, we propose a, a general problem named the graph sanitation problem to modify the given graph uh, to improve a various downstream task. And about the uh, node classification problem, we propose a specific solution named the gasoline. While it is flexible for different downstream classifiers and provide a, a various modification fashions. And we also provide a speed up version named the low rank gasoline, which enjoys linear complexity with respect to the number of nodes and edges. And we conduct comprehensive experiments to show the effectiveness of our broad variants and including the low rank version. And we find that our method can even further boosting those established defense methods. Okay, thank you. Uh, any question from the audience? Thank you very much for the great presentation. Uh, do we have any questions from the attendants? Well, if not, I have a question. So to what extent is your approach sensitive to the initial graph being uh, noisy, for example? You, you, you spoke about uh, poisoned graphs, but uh, to what extent do we have to perform thorough data cleaning for, for the approach to be robust? Uh, so, so your question is, uh, to what extent our method is effective, right? 
yes, yes. On 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 graphs, it can be noisy. Yeah, yeah, yes. The graph can be noisy. Actually, we uh in this uh slides, we only show that against the poisoning attack, but we only, we also provide results in our paper that we add random noise to the graph and we get consistent advantages uh, compared with those defense methods or those uh, robust graph neural network models. Okay, great. So um, are there other questions for the speaker? Okay, so what is your next um, uh, step in extending this work? Uh, the next step is to improve the uh, uh, efficiency actually, because the low rank version uh, lack of interpretability. So we wanted to mine in the uh, hidden, uh, we use the uh, mechanism of the G GM model to do some sampling about the uh, structural learning to improve the uh, speed up. Okay, great. Well, sounds like very exciting work ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you.